Ahoy y'all, and let's set sail for the 10 of 10 for March 21st of 2024. I'm Matt, that's Tim, we're the Maple Brothers. We've got some great plants to talk about for you here today. Guys, we're MrMaple.com. We talk about 10 trees every Tuesday at 9 a.m. that are gonna listen to our website at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And guess what? There's actually 20 of those. So guys, starting off, we've got Pinus contorta, Taylor's sunburst. Beautiful plant. Now this is actually the same species as Chief Joseph's. It's gonna work zones five through eight. You may need to protect this one from some hotter sun in the deep south especially. Absolutely exquisite plant. This is an Oregon or Pacific Northwest native. Beautiful colors on this one. Now this one is an exquisite green with bright yellow new growth on the new growth on top. <laughs> now this thing really puts on a show of that yellow. The yellow on top of that green gives such good contrast. It rocks it out there in the garden. It's one of those trees that's a highlighter in the spring and the summer. Every time you see that flush of growth, you see that bright yellow color on top of this. So this is a showpiece out there. Many people compare it to a Chief Joseph because the Chief Joseph gives you the yellow during the winter. That's just the brightest intense yellow all around. But this one may even get a little more intense on that new growth than Chief Joseph itself. The yellow on this one that is new growth is exquisite. What do we got next? Next up, we've got Acer Palmatum Summer Gold. You've been lacking in the yellow dance lately. I've had, I've had people in the comment section say how much you haven't been doing the yellow dance. I guess we're not in leaf yet though. Hey, we're out of a leaf right now. When these trees come back, you'll be seeing that yellow dance come flying out. Now, Lee Todd, one of my favorite people in the chat, shout out to Lee Todd. He was kind of hating on your yellow dance. He said he was gonna see you some yellow classes, some dance classes, not yellow classes. <laughs> Guys, Summer Gold is a six to eight foot upright tree. <laughs> it gives you some intense yellow colors in the sun. It still gives you yellow colors in the shade so it can brighten up those dark places in the garden. It's one of my favorite trees to put out there in the garden because it contrasts so well with so many other Japanese maples. Now this one's gonna work zones five through nine and it fits in a lot of nice spaces because typically this one's around five to six foot in 10 years. Very dense, full plant. It's a perfect pairing with the Magi Shiguri we recently had on the, land, on, on the uh, table. Beautiful plant. You're gonna love this one for its durability, especially in sun and zone eight. This one has really outperformed for a dwarfer yellow. It's one of the best for full sun. It does excellent. Now this one's from Girardelli Nursery in Italy. They named a lot of great plants. Uh, this one though, it tends to be one of our standouts here. We do a lot of them. I mean, one, because Tim talks about yellow plants in every single video. And in every single video, he recommends pairing your plants with summer gold. So we've got it here for you today. Finally, you can pair all those plants from all the previous tenant tens with summer gold. It's funny when we do our top uh, sales plants for the year, summer gold just keeps rising every year. I don't know why, it's because I keep talking about it. And it's because I love this tree and the yellow it can provide out there in the landscape. Buy one today despite the yellow dance. Just even, even in spite of that, sorry Lee Todd, he's still yellow dancing, but guys, I love it. I actually created the yellow dance for him. I said, hey, hop on here, I'm gonna video this. He said, do something kind of like the Carlton. And I was like, okay, I don't really know the Carlton. Well, actually, I just said, do your normal dance. <laughs> All right, what's next? We got Pasilla Omerica Benson's Blue. And man, did Benson bring it with this one. Yeah, this is a dense, compact blue spruce. It's gonna get about three to four feet tall, three to four foot wide, dense, compact. I mean, as you can see here last year, this probably grew about three or four inches. It is an extremely slow, dense tree with short needles, making it excellent for bonsai, excellent for fairy gardens, excellent for those small places in your landscape. Two to three foot, two to three foot wide, very dense, compact habit to this one. One of my favorite things about this is the color. So this one kind of gets some darker evergreen shades, with that blue green on top of it. So it's kind of a darker blue for a blue and that darker green in there really gives it just a ton of extra contrast even with itself. It, I mean, it feels more forest-like if that's even possible. It feels like something you know you discovered for the first time every time you see this one. I mean, this is a perfect tree for that fairy garden though. I mean, you put this out there, I can see people putting those little statues and stuff around it and really creating that miniature landscape to really just play off of how mythical this plant kind of looks. So this one looks great in a conifer trough or in a big container. It's a great one for the small conifer garden as well. Uh, we recently had uh, last week or earlier Tuesday, we had Scarlet Princess, perfect pairing with this for colors as well. All right, y'all, we're bringing back Jubilee. Now Talon Buckholtz named Jubilee. He said he named this one Jubilee to tell people what a happy guy he was. He named Jubilee, he named Celebration. Cause he's such a cheerful guy. I mean, he could have the party series, right? <laughs> right, but we, it's the party series up in here. We often call this the, one of the part of the new ghost because it's some of the trees he introduced that don't have that ghost name attached to them with that reticulated variegation. This one 
We often see a lot of his introductions and you think you know the plant that it came from and you think, hey, this looks like this is an amber ghost seedling. You know, his records, I actually believe this is a purple ghost seedling that has amber ghost-like traits to it, but it's shorter and denser. So Talon's gonna watch the video later and he's gonna say, why'd you laugh when you said I'm such a cheerful guy? <laughs> awesome plant though, go watch our new ghost. We break down all of our favorites. This one is exquisite, typically at around seven, six to seven foot, even in 10 years, not quite as vigorous as some of the others, but right in the middle. I love Jubilee for that pink. You can get some pinks, some yellows, some exquisite colors. I have one in my garden and it's probably four to five foot tall now. And it's just a highlighter pink, especially in early spring. I'm giving it a good bit of sun. So give it some shade can kind of change the colors around a little bit. Give it some late day shade will actually bring those colors longer into the summer. Absolutely beautiful plant. Tends to be a little bit more dense as well than some of the other new ghosts. I was listening to some party rock on the way, LMFAO on the way to uh, work today. You can put this and have that party in your garden. What's the guy doing in this? Party rock in uh, You know, a reference to the, uh, I don't know, early 2000s music of your college career. All right, guys, next up we've got American <laughs> on know, the table. American is a dense, compact dwarf witch's broom ginkgo. Selected by Piet Vergelt, one of the few introductions by Piet Vergelt that he's introduced that he didn't put the name Peve in front of. You know, I was listening to the Ohio Players earlier and it doesn't have anything to do with American, but I just thought it was pretty cool. Good band, check them out. Uh, uh, American is one of my favorite dwarf ginkgos. Re definitely lime your ginkgos. Lime them will give them a little bit faster growth rate, but American is a true dwarf, especially when low grafted like this. Like grafting it low does decrease the size overall. I noticed putting these on standards can make them a little faster growing. Beautiful plant though, more of everything you love about a full-size male ginkgo in a dwarf compact habit. I think this is probably the perfect ginkgo for the patio garden. If you live near the ocean, you get salt spray, they're ocean tolerant. If you live in a city, they're pollution tolerant. If you live... Maybe not ocean tolerant, maybe salt tolerant. Salt tolerant, salt tolerant. Don't dip it in the ocean, y'all. <laughs> but I'm Don't just, take it scuba diving with you. They're salt tolerant, pollution tolerant, drought tolerant, heat tolerant. Flamethrower tolerant. They're not flamethrower tolerant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they are very easy to grow though in a dense compact nature and they have that bright school bus yellow fall color. It's everything you want in a tree and it contrasts so well in the fall with many of the oranges and reds many of your Japanese maples will go to in the fall. Great plant. Again, lime your ginkgos, they'll love it. Guys, we've got an excellent Camacypris obtuso. This is a Noki Cypress. We've got Confucius on the table back for you today. Now, we recently went to a memorial for the late, great Tom Cox. Uh, they had a one year since his passing. So uh, just love that family. Really nice to see what they're doing. We're gonna do an update on continuing it. I know for a fact that Confucius was one of Tom's favorite trees there in the garden. He used to talk about that one a lot to me. I remember going down to his garden years ago and he would say, Tim, you gotta get this tree in production. You need to do some rooted cuttings. And we were at Japanese Maple Nursery at the time. And I was like, all right, Tom, let's start sticking some cuttings. And we fell in love with this tree because it's yellow. It's an Anoki Cypress. It fits so well in many of the Japanese gardens. In traditional Japanese gardening, Hinoki cypresses is what they use. You get that same texture, that same form with more flair with the yellow color. And that's what I love. You add that a little bit extra flair into Japanese gardening, it brightens your garden and really makes it shine. Beautiful plant. Now this one brings it with the yellows. It has a little bit more of a rounded look to all the foliage. It's an excellent uh, screening conifer. So if you want something that's gonna kind of fill out an area, give you some space between you and a, and a neighbor. It's an excellent way to screen them out as well. All right, next up on the table, y'all, we've got Acer Palmatum Ariadne. Now, I was recently listening to some Marcus King. He's like a Southern rock guy. Again, doesn't have anything to do with this tree, but you should check him out. And next time you're on Spotify playing Marcus King, make sure to sign up for the Buckholtz Nursery podcast. We have an audio book on there. I think you guys are going to love it. We've got Sean on there. He's been doing some voiceovers of Talon Buckholtz blog. If you like plant geek stuff, you're going to be blessed by that one. I'm just going to tell you, that's a lot of fun. I listen to it myself. Now, if you're a plant geek, come to our open house April 5th and April 6th. April 5th, 8 to 5. April 6th, 8 to noon. We're going to have cool people, cool plants, and a fun time with spring colors here at MrMaple.com. Full details, check them out on our website. We're going to have a lot of plant nerds there, too. Cool plants, game show, coffee truck, food truck. We're doing it all out here big. Definitely come see us. So Friday's gonna be the main day. A little overspill for you Saturday, guys. Now hard cut off at 12. All right, let's get into this last tree on the table. We got Ariadne. Guys, Ariadne is the Greek goddess of the maze and you will get lost in the maze of colors that this one provides out there in the garden. It's a selection named by our friend Cor Van Geldren 
after his daughter, Ariadne, with some good reticulated variegation. <laughs> I feel like I should do like a DJ voice. <laughs> Excellent plant. You're going to love this one, guys. Uh, again, beautiful colors. It, it, it kind of gets ignored uh, almost because of the Ghost Series. I mean, I think the Ghost Series steals the thunder, but this is a reticulated plant you got to have in your garden. If it was a ghost, it probably would be more popular than some of the ghosts even. Love this plant. It's got lavenders. It's got light purples. It's got whites. It's got everything you want in a more uh, edged out leaf. So you got that kind of more, you know, edging going on around. Every single leaf has a little bit more snowflake-like look to it. Absolutely exquisite plant to be growing. The serrations on the lobes are something that really draws you into it. It has a good upright form. The colors on it are really bright as well. And you can get great colors, even with the summer flushes of new growth, are almost like a coral pink over top of the reticulated variegation. So this tree wins all throughout the season. Definitely a tree to be trying in your garden. About six to eight foot in 10 years. <laughs> all, right. all right, next up, y'all, we've got Pinostrobus Hortsford Dwarf. Now, Hortsford Dwarf is a Pinostrobus, dense compact, four foot by four foot in 10 years. Found as a witch's broom. This thing gives you some good blue color in the landscape. Really nice compact habit of this one. Dwarf, uh, dense. Reminds me a lot of Biltmore Blue, but a different shade. So you've got some more dark green going on there, but you do get some blue hues as well. Absolutely exquisite container plant or in the ground. This one brings it for that dwarf miniature compact conifer shape. And a lot of you guys have been asking for, you've been asking for more dwarf compact conifers, some great sizes in these Hortsfords here today. I like Pinostrobus because they're good pretty much everywhere Japanese maple is good for. Zones five through nine, you can grow a Pinostrobus the white pine that's native to the eastern United States. Easy to grow for people all around the country. You get a dense compact dwarf with that as well. It's going to be a tree that can fit in those smaller places in the garden. All right, next up, we've got red Makawa. <laughs> all right, guys, we, you guys love these. They're always popular. These are sorted red seedlings of Makawa Yetsubusa. So these are seeds from Makawa that all retain that dense, compact habit of Makawa Yetsubusa. Most of these are actually from the Buckholtz farm. So these are from that giant, one of the oldest Makawa Yetsubusas in the entire world there. Uh, we picked just the best of these. Now with this set, you're not guaranteed to get, you know, one that lasts all summer, but you could. I mean, we don't know. We haven't evaluated all these is the honest answer. What you are guaranteed to get with these seedlings is a dwarf compact Makawa with red spring flushes. These trees have all been sorted for having that orange to red spring color. So they're going to give you some good color out there in the landscape and garden. Dense compact habit that you love, like Makawi Etsubusa. I mean, the, really, there could be some big winners through here. There could be even possibly a plant that has one that holds its color really well in the, in the landscape and garden. I know last so, year at Open House, these were, I mean, people were fighting over these. People, Some of the best plants I've seen pictures of were these red seedlings. We sort down the reds and the greens. We'll do a set of some greens and yellows for you guys as well. The reds are the most popular. And there's some absolutely outstanding ones. Please. Give them some sun in the ground. We'll give you your best color. Um, some of these are absolutely to die for, though. We sort through them. We pick our favorites. Some of our favorites get named. Guys, here's a chance to get some exquisite red Makawas. Uh, not grafted either, so these are perfect for the bonsai artist. And we've got a big set of these, but they won't last long on today's website. They'll sell out really quickly. So make sure you check out fast, because these will sell out quickly today. All right, last but not least, what do we got? We got another big boy, guys. Now, I recently told you guys we developed a seven gallon box here at Mr. Maple. We've got a, a larger style box. We're trying a few of our bigger conifers out here today in our bigger boxes. So we've got a seven gallon box we can ship directly to you. And uh, what do we got up here, Tim? We got Picea pungens May Gold. And this is an evergreen Colorado blue spruce that has bright yellow new growth across it. I had so many people ask when I posted pictures of these, when are you going to ship them? Well, surprise, surprise, we're shipping some of these big guys right now. This one gets some exquisite yellow, especially in the early spring. That new growth flushes an intense, bright yellow color. Uh, I think you're going to absolutely love this Picea pungens and what it can bring to your spring garden, especially. That yellow over top of the blue color is outrageous in any garden. Give this tree some protection from the hot afternoon sun in the zone eight. This is good zones three through eight, though. Awesome tree to add out in the landscape. It's going to be about six to eight foot in 10 years. We've already got some seven gallons that are good three and a half feet tall. So you're looking at a five to six year old plant here. Awesome tree and an awesome size to go ahead and start out in the landscape and garden. Now guys, nothing ships with our seven. So these will be shipping individually to you, but some exquisite sizes on these right now. 
Uh, I think they will be very popular products. Again, if the seven gallon boxes are popular, we may be adding even more product to that seven gallon lineup here on MrMaple.com. Take care. God bless. And have an awesome day.